Hey everybody, it's Brandon Pierce, and today I want to talk to you about how to travel safely with your family. Uh, so many of the people that we talk to about our adventures through over 32 different countries express concern to us about how you could possibly travel safely with a family in other parts of the world where it's so dangerous and where you know bad things happen, right? I mean, there's so much to worry about. What if you get sick? Get some kind of disease? What if your your kid gets lost or kidnapped? Uh, what if you know there's there's some other physical uh, safety danger that that happens because it's just not as regulated or as safe? Well, today I want to help dispel some myths about foreign countries and travel, and I want to help give you some tools to uh, consider as you take your family abroad and uh, travel the world to help you be more safe. And there are some countries where you just feel so safe. I mean, I mean, anywhere you go in the world, if you're in a rural countryside, you know, farm town, you're going to feel pretty safe. Uh, there's not much that happens there. But there are some countries where even the big cities just feel really safe. For example, in Japan, like, like in Tokyo, um, you know, there's so many people there and it may be overwhelming in that regard, but there is such a culture of respect in Japan and it's so organized that you feel very safe there. And they have five-year-olds that ride the subway by themselves. Uh, I mean, it's, it's just a very interesting and, and safe culture in that regard. Sure, bad things happen there. They've got a great mafia in Japan, uh, but uh, it's not something that most people encounter, especially as a tourist. And remember, bad things can happen anywhere in the world, anytime. So you're not necessarily any less safe in other countries than you are in your own. Now, I'm not proposing you just throw all caution to the wind and say, okay, the world is a completely safe place and now let's go travel and nothing bad is going to happen to us because there are things that happen bad to people and you may know someone personally who's had a bad experience uh, in a foreign country, but I bet you also know someone who's had a bad health experience or safety experience in your own neighborhood. <laughs> so where are you going to experience life the fullest and what, what are you going to do to prevent uh, bad things from happening? You can't prevent bad things from happening. You can help reduce them. Use, use common sense, use your intuition, your reason, do a little bit of research and, and then go live your life. You know, don't let fear of the unknown or fear of safety or ultimately fear of death stop you from living a full and beautiful and amazing and rewarding life. You'll hear stories about, you know, horrible things happening to somebody else in the world and you may think, well, there was a terrorist attack in this country, I'm not going there. Or, you know, I heard there was some kid who got kidnapped in this country, so I'm not going there. But, you know, those things typically happen like once every years, right? Very rarely. And the chance of them happening to you are so slim, you're so much more likely to get killed in a car accident driving to work tomorrow than you are to get kidnapped in a foreign country um, when you're traveling. You know what I mean? So don't let those fears keep you from living your dreams. So first, let's talk about general health and, and well-being. Of course, we all know that getting sufficient sleep and exercising and taking care of our bodies is what's going to keep us healthy and happy and, and physically safe in that regard. So if you're, whether you're at home or whether you're in a foreign country, that still applies. Now there are a few differences with, for example, the water um, in a lot of Western countries, it's perfectly safe to drink water from the tap in your kitchen, in your bathroom, wherever, or to drink water and get water in your mouth during the shower. But in some parts of the world, such as lots of Central and South America, parts of Asia, uh, and definitely Africa, uh, you don't want to drink water from the tap unless there's been a filter installed in the place you're staying. Some hotels do have that. Uh, but most of the time it will be through bottled water, either uh, in big five-gallon jugs that they put in the house and you just push the button and fill up your cup and take a drink, or they will have uh, bottles of water that you buy for much less money than you would expect, maybe five, ten cents, twenty cents for a, for a liter of water uh, to drink. So uh, that's you speaking in U.S. dollars. And because the water in those countries is not generally safe from the tap, uh, it's important to wash your vegetables and fruits in the filtered water rather than the tap water. It's okay to wash your dishes in the tap water with soap and then let them dry. They'll be okay. But uh, for food, uh, there are some restaurants that don't use filtered water to wash the vegetables sometimes or there's sanitation issues. That kind of thing can happen. And you can get stomach bugs 
and you know have some some indigestion for a couple days uh, or some some bad vomiting and stuff like that. That that's fairly typical in a lot of parts of the world. But you can typically avoid that by eating at restaurants where the locals eat and ones that have good reviews and consistent, um, you know, good feedback about that sort of thing. Or prepare food yourself and prepare it well, making sure that everything's sanitary. A little bit of lime juice can also help uh, with some of the, the bacterial issues. Now, I think there are a lot of misconceptions out there around the quality and the cost of the medical care that you can receive in other countries. So in the U.S., as we all know the medical care is so ridiculously high that insurance is required in order to even afford basic, basic treatment. In other countries, it's not that way. In fact, we didn't have any insurance for the first five years of our traveling because we didn't need it. We were in countries where the cost of uh, medical care was extremely affordable and very good, like you know Costa Rica and uh, a lot of parts of Asia and pretty much everywhere in the world, really, except for the U.S., <laughs> uh, is, is great. Um, but this year, since we're in the U.S. quite a bit and Canada, we have a policy with IMG, which is a, a travel insurance company. World Nomads is another one that's fairly popular, and you can get decent prices on high-deductible plans. Uh, but remember, the only reason insurance exists at all is because the cost of what you're trying to buy is so expensive. It's become so expensive that insurance companies come in and offer a cheaper alternative. Uh, and they make money doing it. So it's not necessarily required elsewhere in the world. Although I will say, there are going to be a lot of people who disagree with me on this, and I'm okay with that. But if you're in sub-Saharan Africa or you're in some remote place where there's just not good care or you're going to need to be life lighted somewhere if there's an emergency, then yes, get good idea to get an insurance policy or if you're just concerned about that. Uh, for us, it has not been an issue. Uh, and we have, have used the medical system a little bit here and there. We're generally very healthy people, but we have had a few infections and things that we've had to visit clinics for. Uh, let me just tell you a couple stories to give you an illustration of the cost of medical care in other places. So for example, uh, in Bali, we had an infection. Um, see, Jen and I have had one, Marie had one, we've, and we've had doctors come to our house with a nurse, and they'll do all sorts of tests, give antibiotics, whatever it is, and we pay usually 60 to $70 US is what it works out to be for a house call. Uh, it's about the same price if you go to the clinic yourself, which is basically walk in and you don't have really much of a wait and you're treated instantly. Um, we, have, we went to the doctor in New Zealand. New Zealand's interesting because Emergency medical care in New Zealand is actually free for everybody. We have a friend who his appendix burst when he was traveling in New Zealand. He went into the clinic, they, they fixed him up, and um, when he was done, he said, okay, how much do I owe? And they said, nothing, uh, because it was all paid for. So in, in a lot of regards, you're better off having a medical emergency outside of the U.S. than you are inside of the U.S. Uh, and we also had a baby in Costa Rica. Uh, we paid, I think, around 3000 US for that, which includes all the doctor visits, the ultrasounds, and the doctor and the midwife and a doula all coming to our house to attend a home birth. So it was, uh, we, or we could have gone and had it free at a public hospital if we wanted to, but we, or paid a little bit more for a private hospital, but we decided to go the home birth route because it was still affordable enough and that's the experience that we wanted. So, insurance, medical care, uh, all of that is totally possible and wonderful wherever you're at in the world. Uh, of course, there are ish pockets where you might want to be concerned. And if you look at the CDC website, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, you'll get a list of all the recommendations and all the scary things that could happen all over the world. And most of those are very much overblown, in my opinion. Uh, for example, they'll list all the vaccines that are required or recommended for who, uh, you know, pregnant women shouldn't travel here because of this. And, you know, it's really overprotective, way, way, way overprotective from my experience. Uh, for example, there are pockets in Panama, for example, where uh, there, there might be some risk of, of dengue or malaria or there might be parts of, you know, but, but the rest of the country, completely fine. You don't need anything. So, but the CDC says if you're going to Panama, you need to get this, this certain vaccine. So just be aware that, you know, of where, where you're going in the country and what might really actually be required uh, for you to be safe in that part of the country. Uh, if you're going out into some remote jungle, the risk of 
dengue and malaria and those types of mosquito-borne il illnesses will be greater than if you're in the city, where generally those problems don't exist. Now, one of the other dangers that parents are worried about when they think about traveling with the kid is getting lost. Well, not necessarily them getting lost, but their kids getting lost, right? Having your kids separated from you. And honestly, that's scary anywhere in the world, anywhere you go. And it's really not that much different wherever you happen to travel. But there are a few things that, that we like to do as a family to help prevent getting lost. And we've actually had some getting lost experiences, which I'll share. But for example, when we're in crowded public places, we like to hold hands and, and just stay together, make sure we're always together. Um, and if we're going to um, like ride the subway or ride a train and there's the chance of maybe one person not getting on the train, uh, usually we just say, if you don't get on, just stay where you're at and we'll come back and get you. Or if you do get on the train, get off at the next stop and then we'll come pick you up there. So just having some rules and some, uh, some guidelines for what to do in, in that type of situation. Now, when we were in Chiang Mai, Thailand over here, uh, in, oh, it was two or three years ago with some friends, and I was probably more than that now, uh, Marie, who was, I think, seven or eight at the time, uh, got lost at a, a hot air balloon festival we were at. There were thousands of people there. It was getting later at night, and all of a sudden we realized we didn't know where she was, and so we walked around the perimeter. We were searching and searching, and we, we went back kind of the path that we came. We couldn't find her, uh, but it turns out and, and this is the case in so many places, there was a very kind person who, um, who took her and guided her around to help find her parents because she was crying and sad. And, uh, and that was a very scary experience for her, but we, um, yeah, we found her and all was good. And you know, that's the thing that I think, just like any place in the world, there, uh, people are good and kind and generous and wonderful and love to help people, especially families with young kids. And, you know, if, if our kids get lost and they need something, we, we do tell them, you know, if, if you need something, need some help, find a mom, find a family and go ask for their help because generally they'll, they'll be sympathetic and, and willing to help. It's, we don't follow a don't talk to strangers rule. That, that doesn't work uh, in, in the real world, I think. Um, and strangers are generally friendly and helpful people. And sometimes you'll get a vibe about when, when somebody may not have your best interests at heart and uh, we teach our kids to respect those feelings and, and to honor that and, and make, make choices from there. Some other common rules that I've heard are having a family password so that if you know, somebody needs to pick up your kid and you're not there, uh, they need to say a password uh, that your family knows so that the kid knows that they're safe uh, to be picked up by that person. And also making sure our kids know our own, all of, all of our names in the family, of course, uh, our, our email address, our website, we don't typically teach our kids our phone number because our phone number is constantly changing as we move around to different countries and get different SIM cards. Same with our address. Um, but they know our email address and we're always able to check that. So uh, we just tell them, yeah, and they know how to use email and they can get in and they can send us a message uh, from a public computer or from, from anywhere. And there are times when our kids just love to wander and we let them wander off by themselves. Uh, but typically if it's, a new place that we're not familiar with, we'll either go first together or we'll do a buddy system where there's at least two of us together uh, exploring a new place. But in general, our philosophy is to empower our kids to have the skills they need to go throughout the world and feel safe doing it. So it's not necessarily trying to protect them from a dangerous world, but to help them be strong and have strength to move through the beautiful and wonderful and sometimes dangerous world that we live in. Uh, no matter where you're at in it. All right, let's talk about physical dangers now. Uh, these are things that also can happen anywhere. In any big city, you've got crime, you've got uh, you know, physical, some types of physical violence. Uh, but of course, we all know avoiding dark alleyways at night is a good idea. Um, and in many cities, just not being out at night at all is a good idea. In others, like Barcelona, stay out till midnight, 2 a.m. There's families walking around and it's perfectly safe. So just know where you're going and, and what it's going to be like there. But in a lot of parts of the world, um, the less developed areas, for example, you might be driving on a road or walking on a sidewalk that's uneven, that doesn't have railing, uh, you know, those types of physical uh, challenges or roads without sidewalks. Uh, those are types of things that sometimes you'll encounter. 
and in some parts of the world, it's all the traffic works very differently. For example, uh, pedestrians often don't have the right of way. Cars have the right of way. So if you want to cross the street, you wait until there are no cars, and then you cross. You don't expect them to stop for you because they won't. And in other parts of the world, like Vietnam, uh, the cars never stop, <laughs> and there, there's never a space without cars. So basically, if you want to cross the street, you just slowly walk out into the traffic as the cars weave around you. Mostly motorbikes, but a few cars weave around you. I have a video of that on, on our blog elsewhere. Uh, it's a, a fun adventure, and you know, just hold hands and walk at a steady pace, and you make it through. Now, of course, if you're threatened with physical violence, someone pulls a knife or a gun on you, which, again, I think is more common in the States than out of the States, um, give them the money, you know, don't fight. If you're a skilled martial artist, maybe you could consider something, but most skilled martial artists also know to <laughs> get out of there is the, is the real goal. But carrying yourself confidently, uh, walking like you know where you're going, and being friendly and respectful to people uh, are all things that you can do to avoid getting into conflicts and, and running into issues with physical safety. Now, if you're at the beach, sometimes there are flags they put up if it's dangerous or there are riptides to, to be aware of, and it's good to respect those signs. But again, our philosophy isn't to live in fear and caution, but to live an open and full and beautiful life. And when accidents happen, that's the thing is you can't usually prepare for them. They're accidents. So all of these precautions that we can take are, are helpful to help you feel confident and help you move through life more safely. But you never know when you know, an earthquake is going to happen or uh, you're going to find out you've been diagnosed with cancer or you're going to get in a car accident. And again, these are things that can happen anywhere. So preparing for them is, is, as much as possible is great, but then go and live and enjoy your beautiful life because life is a beautiful and wonderful thing, as is this amazing world we live in and can explore. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you feel a little bit more confident, a little bit more safe about going into the world with your family and experiencing all that the world has to offer. So thanks for watching and remember to live well and enjoy life now.